All right, here with Derek Wilbur, president and winemaker of White Springs Winery. We're up here in the amidst of the vineyards, which are, in fact, off-site, right. just a couple miles away from the winery itself. And, uh, Derek, today you're going to explain to me and the viewers a little bit more about canopy management. Yeah, hi, Paul. How are you? Well, Good. I'm glad you have you out here on a beautiful sunny day because this is actually the best time to talk about canopy management. Canopy management is a fancy term for basically our way to manipulate the foliage, which is the shoots and the, and the uh, leaves here, to maximize wine quality. We live in a cool climate area, and one of the things that we have to do is maximize sun exposure to produce nice, fine quality wines. And just like the apple that you buy in the store that is the nicest, is always uh, bright red and very tasty, it's because it's the one that's the furthest out on the tree and well exposed to the sun. So exposing our fruit to the sun is one of the biggest things that we do to improve wine quality. Now grapevines can be a rather unruly lot. If you take a look down the, the, uh, the row here, you see how the grapes are all sort of sprawled out. Early in the spring, they tend to grow up nice upright. And then as the season progresses and the shoots get longer, they start to do this big flop. And so what we do is we want to say, no, that's not how we want to expose our, 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 our fruit to the sun. So we do a number of things. The first thing we do is we train our vines so that all the shoots originate in one relatively narrow area so that our fruit actually exists in probably about a foot. And you can see right here, these, these uh, clusters have just set. These are the little berries that have only been here for about a week and a week and a half. So we train everything so that the fruit's in a relatively narrow zone. The next thing we do is as these shoots begin to grow, we actually have a series of a couple of different what we call catch your foliage wires. You can see them right here. They stick out from the trellis. And so actually about a week ago, our crew came through here. They pulled these wires out, and what they'll do is they'll try to catch. It's a very self-explanatory thing. They catch the foliage and tuck it up and then hook it on these clips. And as you walk down the row, you tuck the foliage in and you hook it on the clips. And as you look back down the row, we get another group of vines here, done. So you're just manhandling them. They're, it's okay, you're not going to hurt anything. They, they always take, seem so fragile to me. They take, they take a lot of abuse. Okay. This has actually been a season two where we've had a lot of rainfall. And this is doubly important, and I'll talk about that in a second. So you can see how it's better than it was before, but that's why we have a couple sets. And actually right now, this is the first part of July, our crew's coming through here a second time to manipulate the second one. And they'll pull it out, tuck the vines in, and then clip it. Walk along and push these things in here. I've got my sons doing this right now. And every morning they come out here and the vines are wet and they're getting nice and wet and I hear about it all day long. Well, that's the only reason really to have kids, am I right? That's true. <laughs> so this is the second step. And we'll get probably 90% of the shoots so will all be up here and well behaved. And you can see how much narrower it is compared to where it was before. And if you take a look at this row on this side, which was done uh, this morning, how much narrower it is. But it's still not perfect. If you take a look at the very traditional vineyards in, in, in Europe, they look like little hedges. And that's probably one of the greatest advances that we've made is first we manipulate the foliage, but that's not good enough because you can see how some of these shoots are going to hang down, they're going to get down here, they're going to shade our fruit. Well, the next thing we do is we actually hedge them. You can do this by machine or you can do it by, by hand. We actually have a machine that does this. It's currently not set up. So this is when I get to do my children with corn impersonation with an old hook like this. It is an impressive piece of hardware. Thank you. Well, you got to be careful not to cut your arm. But what we'll do is we'll, <laughs> yeah, actually, we'll actually put it about a foot above the trellis. And the reason we cut these top ones is that if they grow too tall and they're above these catch wires, they'll eventually bend over. And when they bend over and they'll come down here, they'll shade the fruit. Watch out, Paul. I want to kill you. <laughs> and we'll do the same here and narrow the trellis down so it's only three to four leaves thick. And again, you, you just, you're just hacking and slashing away and that's okay. The vines okay. are tough enough to take it. They, they'll always regrow some stuff. And this, again, this has been a relatively wet year so far. So we're actually getting a little bit more growth than we've had the last couple of years. 
So this manipulation is actually really important right now. And so it's ironic to me that when you have a, what many would characterize as a good growing season with ample water and sun, it actually makes more work for you. Well, it does. And the thing with, with, with growing a fruit crop is we always talk about balance. And the balance, the key thing, is the balance between the amount of vegetative growth, the amount of leaves and shoots we produce, and how much growth that the vines put into reproduction, which is the berries that we make wine out of. Because in the end, it's all about sex. <laughs> Isn't it always? So, let me take a look now. We've made the trellis a lot narrower. And if, Paul, if you look inside, you can see how the sunlight sort of dapples all the way through. And you, can, you don't see a spot where you can't see daylight. Yep. And that's really, really important. And then you can see that, again, we've exposed the fruit a little bit more, but not as much as we'd like. Ideally, we want about 60% of a cluster well exposed to the sun. So the last thing we'll do, and again, there's both machines and people do this, and I'm going to show you, as I'll tell people today, I'm the machine. We're going to go through here and we actually pull leaves. And we'll pull leaves right in the, very, in, the, in the fruit area. And again, the advantage of the way we've trained these vines again is that most of the fruit is located in a relatively narrow band. There are other ways that you can train grapevines so that the fruit's found in a broader area. And that sort of complicates this kind of process because then you've got fruit everywhere. And we actually have a machine that comes along here that acts like an airplane wing, sucks the leaves out and cuts them off. And that's not set up today, so we'll just show. People also can do this by hand. And so basically, as the name implies, you pull leaves. So you walk along. And again, you manhandling these vines, no big deal. These things just bounce right back. No big deal. It's a bigger advantage for us to get these leaves away from here than it is to allow them. And the actual potential loss of photosynthetic activity is much, much less compared to the advantage of exposing the fruit. These, by the way, are Cabernet Franc. And they're very, very big clustered vines. And so this, this makes sure that the everything you've shown me thus far principally is to make sure each of those clusters of grapes, 60% of the cluster gets a right. bunch of sun. Right. It's all about sunlight. And that optimizes the color, the flavor, right. all the qualities of the grapes, but it exactly. also has another effect. Right. The other great advantage of this, and as my college professor said, growing grapes in a cool climate like ours is all about sunlight. Cool climate viticulture is great because we tend to get tremendous flavors from these warm days and cool nights that other hotter growing regions don't get. The last advantage of this and this is the analogy I always use, and some people get squeamish about it. Just like your toes can have problems with fungus because they live in shoes all day long and it's humid and your feet don't dry out, the same is true with grapevines. Our biggest issue here in, uh, on Seneca Lake and in the Finger Lakes is fungal diseases because we live in a humid environment. It just rained this morning. And the principal diseases that we fight all like wetness, leaf wetness or wetness on the clusters to infect. And when you've well exposed your fruit to the sun, you get good air drainage through here, the air moves quickly, they dry out quickly in the, in the morning, and they don't sit wet all day long. And so the critical thing, particularly with European varieties, is when we do all this, we might get rain in the morning, and we did this morning at about two hours ago, and here it's a little after 10, they're all nice and dry now. And if we had all that foliage and all that stuff in there, it's going to stay humid all day long, and we're just going to fight potential for disease. So it, offers us a number of ways to improve wine quality, reduce our I investment in materials, and our sustainability because we're not using materials as much to control diseases. So it has that ancillary benefit as well. And all this work really has been done, this type of manipulation has probably significantly happened probably in the last 25 or 30 years. So this is still relatively new viticulture for the Finger Lakes and has had a huge impact on wine quality, uh, particularly with our reds. Uh, varieties like Cabernet Franc in particular are a very, very late season variety. So everything we can do to get that fruit just as warm as possible and as well exposed to the sun as possible has a huge impact on the quality that we finally see in the glass. Should we be thanking Cornell University? It's Cornell. I mean, actually some of the primary work done on, on, on this was done by my professor I had in college many, many years ago, and it was initially done on, on uh, native varieties. It was sort of discounted because it was from New York, but lo and behold, the work that's been done, particularly in Australia and New Zealand, all comes back to work that was done here. Because again, our issue here is maximizing sun. 
and, and we're always struggling to get more uh, more of it into the vines onto the fruit as possible. So yes, it actually is a huge part of this is actually uh, based here in uh, in New York. And bake that, bake that fungus right off the grapes before it can even start to That's manifest. Right. Exactly right. All right, Derek, I think you covered it all beautifully. You got Thank anything you. else to add? I didn't cut myself, which is okay. And you didn't cut me, which is a good thing. Right. No, no blood on the camera. That's right. White Springs Winery. What's the domain name? you got to give a shout out. www.whitespringswinery.com. We're at the northern end of Seneca Lake, just outside Geneva. Excellent. Thanks for your time, Derek. Hey, my pleasure.